Hi, my name is Zach Collier, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Management at Radford University. And today, my talk is going to be about measuring quality in projects. Measuring project status is a critical project management activity. It's important for maintaining effective monitoring and control of the project, and it facilitates managerial decision making, including things like whether to continue with a project or to end it. Furthermore, it can remind project team members what the managerial priorities are and help them to keep their activities aligned with the project goals and project constraints. All in all, by measuring project status, we're able to answer the question, are we on track to meet customer expectations? In project management, the three criteria which are most often used are cost, schedule, and quality. These are collectively known sometimes as the iron triangle. It's important to note that we can measure these criteria at different levels within the project. We can measure the project cost, schedule, and quality of the project as a whole, or we can measure the cost, schedule, and quality of each activity within the project. It's important as a project manager to be able to measure project quality, especially at the activity level. We define quality as the degree to which a set of inherent characteristics fulfills requirements. Quality is a subjective assessment, so it's much more difficult to measure than cost and schedule are. We can think of quality as accruing gradually and additively throughout the life of the project. And if we're able to successfully measure quality, we can do some interesting analysis of the trade-offs between time, cost, and quality. But how do we measure activity quality? Various innovative ways have been proposed to measure activity quality. The earliest attempts included subjective estimates, taking a value between zero and one. These estimates were then used along with cost and schedule metrics to optimize in various linear programs. Later, some researchers created an index based on various quality criteria and sub-criteria. Then finally, the third approach is to create a quality function, which is a function of cost and schedule indicators. This is the approach that we're going to investigate in more depth. So if we're to define a quality function, there must be some criteria to define what makes a good quality function versus a bad one. Liberatore and Pollock Johnson defined two criteria that make up a good quality function. One, if one holds schedule constant, then quality should be an increasing function of cost. And two, if one holds cost constant, then quality should be an increasing function of schedule. In other words, as we spend more time and money on an activity, quality should increase. Based on the criteria, Liberatore and Pollock Johnson created this quality function based on the bivariate normal distribution. This function is based on the time and cost spent on the activity, the maximum reasonable time and cost values for each activity, the standard deviations, which define the rate at which the quality drops from a maximum to a minimum, and a scaling constant, which defines the maximum quality value. Their quality function normalizes against the maximum time and cost for each activity. This means that you can only reach the maximum quality for each activity once you've expended the maximum time and budget per activity. 
However, this effectively rewards spending more time and money on each activity. From a project perspective, this could lead to behind schedule and over budget projects. In reality, for each activity, after a certain point, additional time and money could probably be spent more economically elsewhere. And so it might be a reasonable assumption to normalize to the expected time and cost for each activity rather than the maximum. Based on these insights, we developed the quality function that you see here. Like the other function, it's a function of time and cost. However, our function is based on the time and cost spent on the activity, the expected duration and cost for that activity, the optimistic duration and cost estimates for the activity, and a scaling constant similar to the variable k in the other quality function. We can get the expected and optimistic durations and cost estimates from a simple three-point estimate, such as the one that is done in PERT analysis. In this slide, we have plotted both of the quality functions side by side. We have time, cost, and quality on each of the three axes. We've scaled both of the functions to a value of 100. 100 is the maximum quality for each of the two functions. On the left, we have the bivariate normal distribution that was explained a few slides ago. We can see for low values of time and cost, we get comparatively low values of quality. And as we increase in time and cost, we gradually slope upwards until we reach a maximum value of quality when we reach a maximum value of cost and time. So in this example, the only way that we can reach a maximum quality is to spend the maximum amount of time and cost on a particular activity. On the right, we have our proposed piecewise function. We can see that after spending a certain amount of time and money on an activity, we reach a plateau at which additional time and money spent on an activity yields no further improvements in quality. Again, this is related to the insight that at some point, spending extra time and money on an activity might not be the best use of the time and the money, and that that time and money could be better spent somewhere else. So in terms of conclusions, we found that perhaps a new criterion for what makes a good quality function is that it should penalize spending more time and money beyond a certain threshold, or at least the function shouldn't reward spending more time and money. Also, by scaling our function to the expected rather than maximum values of time and cost, then there may be less incentive to let work expand to fill the available time and budget. This is a phenomenon in project management known as Parkinson's law. Finally, these are preliminary research results and much more research needs to be done in the area of quality measurement and especially in the area of quality measurement related to project activities. Thank you for listening and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.